All right. Good evening and salam sejahtera kepada semua. Kita kembali ke Talent Talk Show Siri keempat dengan tajuk hangat hari ini. How to build your career brand. Iaitu bagaimana cara membina personality kerjaya anda. What is the one important thing that will secure you an interview call from an organization company? Is it because of a good CV? A good academic results, or is it a long work tenure, an experience in Korea? Don't be surprised if I say that many people may have higher grades or high better called academic results than us. Maybe many of them also may involve working for many prestigious organizations, so the experience look very strong and vibrant. So, how do you want your future employer six in a new recruits? What could be this one differentiator that will make your application stand out from the rest and get noticed? The answer is a unique personal brand or career brand. You might have a, heard a lot the importance of employer branding to attract best winning uh, talent of organi for the organization. But how about personal branding? So stay tuned with us today to know more about personal branding or career branding. For those who just join us, once again, welcome to our fourth episode of Talent Talk Show with an interesting topic for today, how to build your career brand. Before we deep dive into today's topic, let me introduce myself. My name is Kalai and I will be your moderator for tonight. And it's an honor for me to be part of this Talent Talk Show. I hope everyone is coping well with MCO 3.0. Let's be at our best to protect our loved ones. Remember this, Lindong Dire, Lindong Sumwa. For those who are still wondering what's this talent talk show all about, this is a platform where we bring you great leaders and experts from various industries to share their tips, insight, current trends of industry revolutions. 4.0 jobs market as well their experiences. This talent talk show is specially designed for each Malaysian individuals who want to upskill and grow themselves in digital era. We want to move more Malaysian to benefit from this initiative. So let's do a favor here. Like this video, follow us, share this live video to all your loved ones, friends and family groups. Let's continue to spread this good effort Right, we really want, hope more and more people will benefit from this initiative. We don't want no one today to leave without attending this event because it's today we got special guests with us uh, and it's going to be a wonderful session tonight. So this fourth episode is about, we're going to discuss about topic about how to build your career brand. So now the four questions here. Let me see before that. Hi, let me welcome some of the newcomers or even uh, some of them who are saying hi to the community. Yes, and how are you? Akmal, thank you. All right, so before that, I have a question to all of you guys. What is career branding in your understanding? Just, just chat, it's okay, there's no right or wrong. Just chat that so that we can know what is your understanding about career branding. All right, so come on, let's, let's hear what's your response. Just chat, yeah? Right, so that we can know what's your understanding, yes. Some of them say it's about CV, yes, resume, yeah. Anyone else? Hi, Sofian. How are you? All right. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, what's up? Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we're getting more welcome from the job title, career brand. It's a job title. Okay. Thank you, Pralat. Anyone else? What is your understanding about career branding? What does it get to do career branding with you? What is it career branding with an employee, not an employer? So what is your understanding about career branding? Career image, right? Uh, okay, we're also talking famous in career world, right? Uh, that is also good feedback. Arif have shared the potential that we have to take the further steps. Good. David sharing self-marketing. All right, that's awesome. Mohamad Shakir sharing that is a strong network context. Yep. Vichin Sheng sharing that it's online present, presents. Right. Jiang is sharing the value you bring as an individual while representing the company. Right. Arvin also sharing branding ourselves like a real brand. All right. 
So that's some hot understanding, or a lot of people's understanding, understanding and definitions about career brand. We see a lot of people referring to resume and cover letter as a career branding, but that's only 5% of your brand. Some people also mentioned that branding through LinkedIn profile. Yes, it's true, but those channels are only a small part of a career brand. There's so much more than that, just having a nice looking resume or cover letter or social media appearance. Your career brand is how you are perceived online. Everything that show up when someone Google you, your career brand, right? And show across them how you share, how you like, how you comment through any social media like LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or other digital platform, right? In other words, career brand is how the world views you. Some people refer, refer to define it as your professional reputations, or some people say it's a professional image. Uh, it can be also a combination of strength, technical and soft skills, that unique qualities you bring out for, to work apart from other professionals. All right. So now I have another question to ask here. Do, are you a modern job seeker? Anyone here still looking for a job? And you really finding, you know, it's a situation that it's a time for you. Maybe you are looking for a new career. You're looking for any new jobs. Or you think you just completed your certification. If you are, if you are looking for a job, then my question to you is, have you prepared with your career brand? All right. So follow us straight to the event. You'll find out how to build it smartly. With us today, we have an ex industry expert that will be share very good insight to guide you to start to developing your career brand. But before that, please continue, like us, follow us, and share this video to all your friends and family members. We want more and more people to get insight from a valuable guest today who actually spent her time today with us. And before that, right? Let me introduce, before I introduce our guest tonight, let me show to you what's talent a germ. Let's watch this video together, yeah? In 2020, the unemployment in Malaysia rose to 826,000 individuals, and experts predict that it will continue to rise in the next coming years. Degrees alone will not be enough to guarantee a job. The only way to guarantee employment in the future is by reskilling and upskilling. That's why there's Talents, a social enterprise focusing on reshaping the future of your career. Talents prepares you for a lucrative career using a proven methodology to increase your professional values and employability. We first train and certify you with technical skills in line with the fourth industrial revolution and success skills such as data analytics, programming, digital leadership, and much more. Our career coach will then coach you to carry yourself better, improve your personal branding, and increase your professional values. To grow your career, we will place you in a community of professionally certified people to build new networks with people that can help you achieve your goals. All members of Talents community enjoy benefits such as free events every month, fun get-togethers, and more. Through this ecosystem, we have created 600 professionals that are employed in various industries since early 2020. And more young professionals are choosing Talents to upskill, reskill, and grow their career. So, if you wish to take your career to the next level, Join our community today and reshape your future. All right, that was a good, awesome initiative from Talents. I wish that everybody that today in this event, you have better understanding about talent. Okay, without further delay, let me introduce our great speaker for today, who have allocated her valuable time with the, to be with us from a busy schedule, the group chief people officer of Axiata Group Berhad. Let's welcome Puan Norlida Azmi. Good evening. So lovely to Good be Good evening, Puan Norlida. So excited to hear your yeah. questions. <laughs> Okay, we're going, to be, we're going to be very casual today then, right? So because uh, I think there was a lot of questions that already prepared and shared by the, by the committee and 
Zafi has already compiled a lot of questions and we're going to use these times, you know, we're going to get a lot of insight from you because you are a very good brand, have you showed a very good brand a career yourself in LinkedIn. So we're going to take you as a role model today. Anyway, man, you look gorgeous today. I just want to say that as well. Thank you. I have to be as energetic as you and as the crowd, I think, out there from your questions and your responses, you know? All right. Thank you, man. Ma'am, it's a great pleasure and opportunity to have you in our talent talk show. Well, on behalf of the talent community, we'd like to thank you in advance, right? So, ma'am, are you how are you today, ma'am? I'm feeling good. You know, it's it's a Monday. And I, I, I tell you, when they, when they announced that the MCO is going to be extended, right? I feel that we all have to psychologically pivot ourselves, okay? Look at the good thing, why they're doing it, and then you move to positivity. And I was looking forward for this session this evening, actually. Awesome, ma'am. Awesome, ma'am. I'm, I'm, I'm likely we are, we are also already embraced uh, working from home. I think a lot of people now already adapt to the culture. So we are moving ourselves to evolve in this as well. Thank you so much for Nolida. So for Nolida, our talent communities are very, very excited and some of them can't wait to hear from you. So that let's jump into the questions uh, that we are bombarded with, yeah? Right, so uh, you have 30 years of experience, 30 years plus, and it's a wonderful, great of years of experience, spanning across varieties of industry. You have held, held a role as a chief, as a chief, uh, chief officer, right? Uh, Operation Officer of Strategic Planning Head and Chief Human Resource Officer in various markets, including Singapore, United Kingdom, and the Middle East. Can you share with us your experience in people and talent management? You know, one of the beautiful things uh, that life has bestowed about, uh, on me is the ability to have traveled a fair part of the world. And when you talk about um, talent, Actually, I've sat uh, on two sides, right? So the earlier 20 years of my career, I was looking to people in the human resource professionals, right? And I was lucky, I was with organizations that started out uh, like the, my first organization, I must tell you, Kalai, was one, it was a technology company, and I must give a shout out to the company HP at that time. Oh, and right. It had such a strong value proposition for people. Uh, it wanted to build collegiate working relationships, uh, ideation. So you be, I began early in my career appreciating the value before it became fashionable. And in that organization, it was said that the big C is the customer outside, but the small C are your colleagues and your, you know, the, the people in the organization. So that has shaped how I view people in the organization. So when I work across the world, I've been very fortunate. So working in a country uh, like Singapore, right? Uh, my first country outside Malaysia, it is a very uh, advanced, uh, it's very technocratic in, in the sense that skills level are very high, you're playing at a very high level. So the talent space there is, you really are constantly upskilling to be the best in your field. And then I had the opportunity to go to the United Kingdom uh, with the, another bank. And there, you know, it's like everybody's traveling by train, right? So when you talk about the people angle, they're very efficient. They work um, very solidly. Lunch is generally a sandwich at the table. So when uh -huh. you're met right. people, the working style and the social is, is very different. And then coming to the Middle East, it is a much more society, organization, and culture like us in Asia. You know, they value the conversations first, uh, half an hour of conversations first, and then you go to work. It's not unlike, unlike in Malaysia, but maybe less of that social aspect because, you know, when I was in, in the Middle East, I must tell you, my fellow Malaysians, is that they really love Malaysians because we are creative and we have the tenacity and the ability to go through and finish the job, you know, and it's very different. But of course, like I said, it's, it's a very different culture. So the, the people management has to suit not only the organization that we represent, but also the socioeconomic platform you play in. So, you know, in, 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 in like I said, in Singapore is very different. And then you go to the UK yeah. and then coming back and then you go to the Middle East and coming back to Malaysia for me, after being 20 years uh, overseas was very interesting. 
after you've left the country for 20 years, when you come back only for Hari Raya, it's not the same <laughs> as living and being integrated in the fabric. But All nonetheless, right. I'm glad to be back in Malaysia after 20 years abroad. Thank you. Thank you, Puan Lolina, to be back to Malaysia because I think Malaysia need asset like you as well. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I like the word that you said, uh, I captured here, that the big C is actually your customers. That's a wonderful way of you describing the culture that you're, gonna, that you're embracing. So, ma'am, I also have this question that uh, we inspired with your credentials uh, where we you previously the head of talent uh, and management in Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank Global. And I followed with Chief Human Capital Officer, UAM Group Malaysia. And then, of course, after that, Head Human Resource in HSBC, Chief People and Culture Officer in PNB, now the Group Chief People Officer in Azetia. So, how do you see changes in hiring trend and also retaining top talents from these different, different industries? Different industries will uh, generally have the technical and the functional talents are going to be different. And also the organization that you represent will carry an organization culture, Kalai. And you know, when you put your, your, when people put their CVs and you just see the role outside, right? But there is a working culture that should suit your values because when the organization culture suits your values, my God, you just start skyrocket because you identify with the purpose and then you live your passion. And that's very powerful. So you go from, um, you know, like I, in Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank, it is an Islamic bank, right? So I wear the abaya. I'm uh -huh. a little bit more demure than what I am today. But right. the professionalism remains, right? So the, yeah. and, and therefore, in that society, to put women in the front line was not as common. So how do you then make... Um, the value proposition and the working environment that still respects the religion, but gives opportunity to perhaps some of the women. So that was the Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank working with the Arabs around how do you bring all the talents, right? So when I came back, I worked with UEM and it's a construction company, right? Uh, for the most part. And yeah. um, you learn about the industry. So then you gravitate to bring the engineering skills into the organization and STEM you know, we, we looked for STEM graduates and talents to really uplift all of the organization. And then I, I went back to HSBC, you know, I've been in the banking industry for 20 years. So it was like going home, right? And um, HSBC to me was, was, a, was an organization that was also going into the digital world. So not only were we looking for traditional bankers, but how do banks were are pivoting into the digital space, right? I mean, is it fintech or tech fin? You know, there's yeah. always the debate, right? So talents change in the different organization. And then I'm now in Axiata, the telecommunications industry. Oh my God, Kalai, the pace <laughs> is like manic. I mean, you all outside defines how fast we have to move because we have to be relevant. And a lot of the audience, I'm sure, are millennials and zenders. And, you know, if you click and it doesn't come up instantly, you're like, seriously, is this yeah. IR 4.0? So talents in that technical functional space will differ and the pace that you want. In the functional phase of HR and, and, and finance, you could carry that skills a little bit more across the industries. But increasingly, there are traits, um, Kalai, and we may come to this again yeah. later that we look agility, perseverance, creativity, awesome. it doesn't matter which industry, you have to be top of your game uh, to, uh, to, to attract these talents into your company. So I'm always on the lookout for these people, you know? All right. So audience, what Miss Lurida say that she's looking out these kind of people. So there's a lot of opportunity for you as well, right? So stay tuned with this. Right, ma'am, um, I'm going to ask you this question, important question, because being a pandemic situation now, so we are working from home, uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of companies actually have to work from home and they have to, you know, scale it down size also as well. So a lot of people also are facing a lot of challenges. So there's a lot of negativity was going down there. But I have a question to you. What are the some exciting developments that you have witnessed in talent acquisitions, especially during this pandemic, ma'am? Do you think the process become easier or complex? You know, I think the process has become easier 
but the selection has become complex. I mean, let's, let's look at it. Where have the trends going? Today, when somebody reaches my table for a conversation, you know what I do? I Google them first. I look at your digital footprint. What, what do you say about yourself? How active are you? I, I look for a wholesome person. You know, I, I'll be honest with you, originally at the original, uh, when the pandemic set and you have to be uh, digital or virtual, you say, oh, I miss the vibes. And then I say, okay, we're actually going to go into a hybrid organized um, working style, right? So what we are looking for these days is people that can project themselves as effectively on the screen as they do in person. The other thing is a lot of organizations are doing uh, gametization. They are looking through uh, by AI. So is it content or is it visual that attracts it, right? And yep. where are the trends going? As agile skills become more important, there's a lot of project works that come out. And I think sometimes there's a little bit of a psychological thing like, oh my God, it's not a permanent role. It's only a project, right? Um, and is there a feeling like I'm only a contract versus a permanent? Yeah. So I think there's still a... Um, a first class job and a second class job between permanent. But if you think about it, if we are moving towards a gig economy and we are now bringing people with skills for a project rather than the traditional hierarchical roles, I guess we need to ask ourselves how prepared are we to be uh, flexible and nimble? So those are the changes that are coming up, right? So social mm -hmm. media is so important in our hiring. So it's like, it doesn't mean to all the audience that you don't post funny things, you know. Uh, you just have to be more responsible. I like a wholesome person. You know, when I get a CV, particularly of a young person, I actually look, I mean, uh, academic achievements aside, you know, what are the person's hobbies? Do you like uh, hiking? Because I think it's important that a person owns in being a well-balanced, you know, well-being is now part of the employer value proposition. So yeah. a company can make all the, you know, the, the, the programs, the initiatives to maintain physical, mental, dietary well-being and everything else. But it also asks for, the, uh, for, the, uh, for our future talents to say, how do I own my life? So, you know, so I look and sometimes they talk about what they read. Uh, that's even more interesting or the societies that they go. And sometimes, Kalai, by the friends they keep, right? Yeah. <laughs> so those are the trends that are in the hiring. I think there's a lot more of digitization and, and therefore putting that human uh, element of your personality becomes a little bit trickier, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a great sharing, uh, for Norida. That, that reminds me also, I have to be very honest that uh, before the event start, Ms. Vivian was discussed to me. So they were saying that I got to interview Panulita Azmi. So first thing I did was I also Google it yourself. <laughs> like, who's Panulita Azmi? Yeah, true enough. I think there's a trend that nowadays that we are doing, even if you want to go for meeting, for discussion with a new client, even if, uh, even you're going to have you have new customers, or even you're going to have a new job that you want to go in. I think they have a trend that nowadays that everybody starts to look out in Google, even search about the culture of the company, searching about how is the, who is the person they're going to interview. I think the same thing also that audience that we understand, the organizations or person who are going to interview you are doing the same trend that you are doing. All right, man. So can you share some, some insight on how Axiata in planning is strategic directions? Where is it headed? It's core businesses, man. Okay. Something I'm very proud of, you know, because Axiata is like this uh, big digital te telecommunication. And um, anybody who wants to have a conversation must always preface that it's a digital communication because otherwise we're going to be left behind. Axiata has actually three, what we call our tri uh, uh, triple core strategy. One is all our uh, digital telecommunications, like in Malaysia, you'll have the Cellcom, right? And then in Indonesia is Excel, Smart, Robi, uh, Dialog, and Encel in the various countries we're in. So those are what you originally think about, oh, that's what Axiara is about. It's the digital telecommunication. But if we don't acknowledge the fact that digital in the real world of analytics, 
in the real world of AI, deep learning, if we don't embrace it, we're not going to get anywhere. So we have a digital analytics and marketing company, ADA, uh, Azeda Digital um, Services, which is, you know, and I think you saw that we, uh, you know, the digital banks coming into the play. So it's really embracing it. And our third core is actually what we call the uh, infrastructure. You must have the towers, right? You can't have just the, the sexy stuff. Something base has to happen. So where our strategy is, our vision is to be the next generation digital champion. So everything that we do speaks about digital, speaks about innovation. And Kalai is not just the, 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 the people that are doing this technical job. We just launched what we call our digital, about to launch our data citizen program. That means we want to make all of Axiata very digital savvy, understanding how to use data and analytics and not because data is just data, right? What's the information that you can get uh, for, for, our, for our own employees and for our own customers? That's why I'm like saying it's, it's so exciting, you know, to be in this industry. That, that's that's a great to hear that being digital champion, right? That's that's something that attracts a lot of people because we're talking about digitalization, digi digital world, right? Digital savvy. And I like also the digital um, citizens that, that actually going to come out the initiative. So it looks like Azeta are forwarding with this kind of a direction. So what are the criteria and factors in talents you're looking to hire? Let's say you're hiring them. So since many of viewers tonight is uh, certified individuals in IR 4.0, uh, they might be the next talent for Azeta. I want to hire them. So, what are the talents or even the skills they're looking for them? So, certainly, I think now when you talk about digital skills, it's no longer a, what we call in Azeta. We are we we have what we call our people quality framework, and there is something that's called collective skills. You know, they used to say that oh, digital. If you're doing programming, we actually know that the generations that are coming into our workforce are now digital natives. I mean, it's, it's child's play for them, right? So what we're looking for that, apart from that uh, very savviness in digital, is the mental agility, creativity, and curiosity. And, and you know, you can be digital and all, but how do you connect to the company's problem statements? And the reason I say problem statement is not so much as a problem problem, because these days, you know, when a, a company has a purpose, it's no longer about just bottom line, right? It's about yeah. the purpose. So most of our uh, people that comes in is, they want to know what's the purpose of the organization. They want to know what is my sustainability program, connectivity to the environment, to the ecosystem. So we always talk about the digital ecosystem with the human touch. So, that, so we look for a very balanced individual. And, and you know, Kalai, as, as part of our digital um, thrust, we also know that there are people in the organization that may not be at the same level as the people that are coming in, right? So we are upskilling everybody. We have a virtual, what we call the Asiata Fast Forward is a virtual academy. I'm very proud about, about this. Uh, I mean, you know, everything is early days or midway, but really, so when we bring the new talents, it's going to be, um, so the digital generation gap is not that big because we want to do what's better for the outside so the talents that we look for are, are hungry uh you know understand what they want to do and understand how they can contribute and i know they want to contribute beyond just the bottom line so you know sometimes Kalai these days it's not just uh, the company choosing the talents the chat the talents choose the company too i i really believe it's like a two-way both both wants to marry each other so you have right. a winning value proposition all right, all right, all right. So that's a, that's a, that's a wonderful example, uh, Ponolida. So coming back again, Ponolida, if I recap back again, uh, community members. So what Ponolida is saying, digital talent is not necessarily purely people who are doing programming. It is also other skills that are related. That's why Ponolida clearly shared that she also will look into, interested to look at the people's CV, what kind of uh, activity they like to do, like hiking, you know, what kind of uh, book they like to read what kind of society they like to join in because that's actually give you a reflection 
sense of how kind of a person you are. So how creativity are you? So this is why she keep on saying that, you know, it is not only purely on looking into the technical skills or even the academic results. So that could be also the strong answer. What is a career brand? So now, ma'am, I'm going to come to the very technical questions because we're going to have a lot of statistics here, right? So we have gathered a new data from the Department of Statistics on the underemployment. Yeah, shows that 2.1 million people are underemployed, which means they are working on a short-term basis, right? And they're taking jobs below their skills level or low pay. So we have 2.1 million. This is the data, everybody. And we have also another 771,000 of people who are fully unemployed. So that's like 19.4% of the workforce scrapping to make the ends meet. So the question here, ma'am, with a further MCO, full MCO that that's now leads to uh, numbers of increase of underemployment and unemployment numbers, can you share how an established career brand can help professional acquire jobs during these difficulty times? Man? You know, I think we have to also understand what the pandemic brings as the implications. And, and I think once you pass the, 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 the conversation of life versus livelihood, and then you go to the next level, right? Because I think uh, there are some jobs, uh, perhaps it's not at the rate that we require to address the gap, but when you want to build a career brand, I think um, it's, that's your question, right, uh, Kalai? How do yeah, you- Yeah, career brand, correct, man. During this time, the, right? The, the, the career brand. You know, for me, the brand must be underlined by substance. Sometimes people may, uh, I, I find sometimes people have a great, branding but content uh -huh. other so a bit susa sometimes you can you know you can pump it up but it's never so always begin that your substance is good so let's say now you have the uh, academic qualifications and the technical skills and i'm not talking whether you have 4.0 or what because i think sometimes uh, not all organizations look for the creme de la creme you know but you must have some baseline so have something that is very substantive so when you build a brand, it's just not your academic uh, credentials. Like I said, have, represent yourself well in covering other things that you do. Some young people may, may, may feel that, oh, I haven't done much, but actually you've been very active in the community or in, in, your, in your school itself. Articulate that as, as what you have done. And sometimes when you articulate, yes, I, I, I've done this, Maybe you can dimension this that, you know, I, I help save this, uh, this uh, initiative by, by 100,000, 10,000, whatever the amount is, because you're showing with that saving, you're able to send it somewhere else. Think about it in absolute um, examples. So when you're building a talent brand as well, Kalai, you, you talk about a story about yourself, but you don't want to make a drama, right? Yeah. I mean, for yeah. me, I put my drama on my Instagram, you know, I put my intellectual content generally on LinkedIn, uh, and these two personalities make who I am. So I think when you're building a career brand, your career brand and your personal brand these days is very blurred. It's almost the same, uh, if you will, because like I said to you, I Google everybody, you know, and sometimes when we're doing somebody very senior, we even Google the address, you know because you want to make sure that, you know, the lifestyle yeah. befits what you want. So I think when you, when you uh, during this difficult time, when you want to get noticed, please remember that sometimes, you know, because the need for one job will get 3000 applicants, how do you stand out, you know? So you, you have to be able to concisely put in your, in, in your CV, a true reflection of yourself, complement it, with any social media. And like I said, it doesn't mean that you don't put your fun stuff. I love seeing people that, uh, you know, uh, goes jumping and have coffee, goes jumping, uh, mountain climbing, have coffee with your friends, you know, um, because that's, that's the reality of who people are. And, and the other thing is the networking element, Kalai. Yeah. Uh, that's really, really key in my opinion. That's awesome. So like what Afman Norida shared here, some very good 
points that I have captured, which I can summarize here. It is okay that in your social media platform that they're sharing the activities that they're doing, like going for hiking, you know, climbing mountain, having a coffee, because that reflects genuinely who you are. So that's going to be describes where if, let's say, instead of you, when you're sending out your resumes or applications, like what we said earlier in the in the in before the talk talk, talk show start, that you may have people who are better grades than you. You may have people who have many years experience than you. So you have a lot of competition there. So the only way you can stand out here is actually a career brand. So this career brand is how you perceive through this online. So that is also, you have to be careful that the types of that remarks or comments that you're actually giving out because that's also are included into this networking. And the numbers of people like, like what Paul Nadia said, the network, of the people that you surround, the people that you like to follow, who are you following, right? So that shows your interest as well, right? So now yes, I, want... I, I wanted to say yes. something, you know, yes, because uh, times are very challenging these days, right? So I've had people who says, oh, you know what, I, I, I couldn't get a job. So I'm doing something that really doesn't interest me, but I, I'm doing it because it keeps my brain going or it, because I need to support my parents or something like that. That's a lot of honor in that statement because the awesome. person is saying, okay, this is my reality today. And not all of us are privileged to do what we want to do with our passion all the time. Sometimes you do something because you have to, and there is no shame in that. And you say, okay, maybe for two years, I'm going to do this. And then you come out. And those conversations with me, the career conversations, really you find what you may lose in the career, you really uh, uh, gain in your character. And I tell you, character is just very difficult to buy. That is experience. And that is really engaging what life uh, gives you. And when you tell these stories uh, of your experience, it, it makes you such an authentic individual. Uh, and, as you, uh, and as you go up into senior positions, you can relate better sometimes because some people do have knocks in their life. You yeah. do have to yeah. acknowledge that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a, that's a, that's a genuine sharing for Nolita. Because if you ask me, there's many of us also have taken a break in between their career. So don't be shy to share genuinely. You know what was the attempts of you trying a new things, or probably you have other ideas that you're doing. So what one only I say here, don't be shy, you know, don't be shame yourself because what are you going to reflect on sharing the genuinity is going to show the value or personality of yourself that you'd like to put in because everybody's have up and down here, right? That, that's a good sharing. I think this is this is something everybody going to love to hear because I'm hearing like this is the second talk show that people asking, you know, C-level people are asking that be genuine. That's the personality they're looking at. Ma'am. A professional with a strong brand stands out in the crowd and gains more attention when they share their goals, skills, and expertise. As we know that, Wanolida, you have a very strong brand, especially in LinkedIn. So can you share to us what are the tips in building a good brand? Because some people say, just do it. There's no right or wrong. But I believe to brand yourself effectively, you need to have a good strategy. When and how to start or where to start, man? I think this is the question that a lot of people are eyeing, man. Right? So those uh, this audience at home, you have a pen and paper, you can actually take down. To be digitalized, just type notes in your phone. Yeah? You know, uh, Kalai, in all honesty, I'm not sure I started out with a strategy, but I was looking around and I'm like saying, wow, how do I, how do I, 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 I build a personal brand and what for me was important, I, I asked myself, what do I want to stand for, right? So there is what I want to stand for. And I know that, and what you want to stand for can change as you go through your life. So for me right now, what I, I stand for is, uh, because I'm in this industry and I, I love transformation, I love change. So I stand for doing, and you know, the, 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 the culture of Asiata is called MAD. It's, it's modern, agile, and digital. So I'm happy to be mad. Okay. Can you imagine that, that that acronym just drives you crazy, right? So I love transformation because I, I like creating things. But I also stand for something very strong. I stand for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And um, I don't, and it's not just about gender, 
uh, when I was in HSBC, we had a, a phenomenal employee resource program and, and it really shaped what I want to do in this space. It's about the balance of, of, of gender. It's about generations. We now have between five to six generations, depending which uh, reference charts you go to. So yeah. we think about, you know, in Azeta, we have our Azeta Young Talent Program that goes to secondary school, right? So then we have the Zenders, then we have the Millennials, then we have the Gen Xers, and then we have the Baby Boomers, and then we, we have the, the Traditionalists, right? And actually it's the whole ecosystem. When you think about it, we have interns coming in in the organization. And in an organization where the board influences our action, and most of the boards are past 60, right? So they are going to be in that gender. So you know you have a very cross, and then so that's generations. The other one is about, um, you know, uh, your, your, your race, your religion, you know, uh, that's diversity of ethnicities. And the last one that was big where I was was about abilities, because not everybody is born with equal abilities. And how do you respect, how do you make it a working set? So I stand for that. Uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and I also stand for total well-being. And I and 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 every place that I've been, I'm very proud to say that I've launched either both a diversity equity program or a well-being, which covers uh, mental, physical, financial, and and recently in Azeta we launched our Azeta Cares, and we put wow. through this program about mental, physical, about your career, about your community, and about environment, and. I, and I stand for this thing. So that's how you build a, a career brand, right? So you stand yeah. for these things. So when you're, when, you're, when you're engaging on LinkedIn, follow some people that you respect their views and their values. And sometimes have a conversation with them uh, because that's how engagement is. And when you are posting something, speak about yourself or against an issue or against uh, what you stand for. And once in a while, you can throw a lighthearted thing. You know, I have, I, I have a hashtag that says, uh, don't take yourself too seriously because you have to have a balance in life. But my other hashtag is making an impact. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I like to think that I'm part of initiatives that is not perfect, but part of initiatives that will make an impact. If it makes an, a positive impact to a small population, I'm, I feel good enough. So I think is making an impact is very important to me. So, and when you do, when you are building your career brand, don't build it by how many likes you have. Look at the conversation that it engenders for people to say, oh, I like your thought leadership or, oh, well done. You know, I, I, I can relate to it. And sometimes there's no conversation. Um, and, and, and you know, not everybody's gonna like you, right? So you, you have to know when you're building a brand, you are, what do you stand for apart from your work, apart from your yeah. job title? And it doesn't matter who likes you because you know, I always believe, maybe it's because I'm already old. I'm like saying, if you like me, you read my stuff. If you don't like me, read somebody else's, but read, read and connect yeah. because different people have different points of resonance. Awesome, awesome. Ma'am, I remember this that you are saying about making an impact, that hashtag making an impact. Honestly, uh, if you remember, uh, I think pre before we start the event itself, we had a talk that we're saying that we're going to give a talk today uh, about uh, to the talent community. I remember you say that, that you want to make an impact. Even one person get some knowledge or get some this insight, you will be very happy. So audience, this is Juan Nolida. She's yeah. the one that actually shared this and actually impressed me. And I say that you know, it's okay, you know, when we are sharing such knowledge, even a person who gets this knowledge and she uses it, she'll be very happy. So we are glad to have you on board here to be yeah. such a strong personality, right? Well, our audience here, uh, I think we have one hot questions from the comment box I'm trying to get here. Um, it's from Grace Chun. She was asking this question, can you still build a career brand even though you're having a good of uh, 10 to 15 years of working experience? Means you're not a fresh grad, you already have 10 to 15 years. Can you still, bring, uh, can you still uh, build a career brand? Oh, absolutely. You know, you can build a career brand at any stage of your life, you know? Uh, Grace, is it? Yeah, Grace. Grace yeah. I'm a boomer. Some people may say, oh my God, She's already going to retire. She doesn't need a career brand, right? But you know, it's like what at what stage you are at, 
What do you want to make of life? What else do you want to achieve? You know, and that, that actually will propel you forward. And if you say you only have 15 years, you have a great 15 years, you know, and that's the talent brand. So reflect on your 15 years and see what is it that you did well? What is it that you still want to do well going forward? You know, I, I think you need to say, what is it when you build a career brand at this stage? Think about what is it that you want to grow forward? And when you begin to be able to articulate, then I think it just sort of shapes you. You know, I'm, I'm one of those people and some people who are in my team will say, oh my God, don't give her too much ideas. It will spark <laughs> something and she wants to do a gazillion things, right? But you know, when you work in a team, there are some crazy people like me that wants to do everything. Yesterday, some people say, no, I need all 10 steps done before we execute. And, and therefore you can build a career brand at any stage of your life. All right, that's awesome, Sherry. Uh, I hope, Grace, you got the answer. I, I, on top of the questions, I have another one question, I think which is very related uh, from Aaron Edwards. So, so asking here is that, when does personal branding accidentally cross the line into bragging or beating boostfulness? Oh, I, I, I can hear you, you know. <laughs> I think it goes into bragging when, when you see a lot of the words is I, I, I. You know, all right. For me, for me, it's like when you break that I I saved the world, rather than you say, you know, with this initiative, 10 people have benefited rather than mm -hmm. I help, you know. Um, I think it's the words that you choose, and sometimes it's okay to brag because you want to be proud, and you know what? So you deserve a pat on the back when you do something good. Listen, there's no shame in giving a pet, but you know, you don't want to go pet, pet all the time like nothing's happening, right? So it's, the, it's like my, my, my current boss is, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And if you think about that, you want to make an impact, look at what you have achieved versus what you have achieved. You know what I'm trying to say is the outcome. And then you find such a humility in that what you have contributed rather than um, the outcome rather than you, you know, that's, that's how I feel. Um, that's how I, 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 Yeah. So uh, I hope Edward, uh, Aaron, Ed, Edward, you have got the answer. I think uh, part of it, uh, one have said also that we have to be genuine, right? So when you are actually being in a social media platform, so you are being genuine, I'm very sure the bragging will be not into the place because you are already going to be a very low profile, humble person because that's actually going to carry your personality, right? So choice of words is also important for you to be in the social media platform. Then we have our audience who also want to know that how to communicate their value propositions to hiring manager, how to be more standout and influence uh, hiring decisions. The best way to influence is if you can back up whatever you say by an experience or a contribution. And I think I started this when I said that, you know, when you have a career brand, make sure your substance is strong. Because when somebody, uh, when I'm interviewing somebody and then we ask a question and then you're able to relate to something. Say you say that, you know, you're very, uh, you're very, I'm, I'm a very creative person. What is it that you've done that was creative? And how did that creativity translate into a result for you or for another person or for the community or for your colleagues? You know, you have to carry your thoughts through. I think it's worth for, for people to just think, just reflect. What are the 10 great things that you feel that you have done? Don't care about other people's opinion. You know what I always feel? There's gonna be two persons who's always gonna diss you. It's okay. Take it as a character building, but think about, you know, and I wanted to ask, uh, there's another thing I would also suggest, ask your friends and ask your enemies and have the courage to listen to their feedback. You know, I, I surround myself with some colleagues, you know, who are so, my God, you know, give me a headache, but they speak their mind. I would yeah. hate to yeah. have a working team that always says, yes, 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 boss, you know, uh, I know my name is Nolida here, but I now go. I, I now go by Olive. You see my LinkedIn. I put yeah, uh, yeah. In brackets Olive O L I. I I love challenges because then 
there's two things that can happen. As I defend my position or build upon my, 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 my premise, my position gets stronger. Or secondly, actually, the feedback I'm getting that could appear contrarian, I'm actually expanding my brains. For me, when I don't talk back to you and you say Nas, something nasty, it's because I say, why should you benefit from my brain? You know? Um, sure. And also, sure. it gives me calm, la, kala, you know, it's like, okay, <laughs> calm, calm, you know? Uh, because that's, and, and that's the other thing about building a personal brand. It's your real life interactions. As you expose yourself, it's not just captured on paper, on any other social media, but your connections. Like they say, oh, I remember her screaming her head off and maybe it was validated but that one screaming will plague me for life so you must remember that you may have some things that may go against you but make sure that don't get defensive the next time you says you know i really had a bad day i should have yeah. controlled my temper uh, i think yeah. humility and acknowledging uh, bad situations is better than trying to say well he was very nasty to me you know then it, you know, it's like for me, you spit in the air, it falls on yourself. So, so you sure, really need sure. to be careful of how you conduct yourself. And I, I'll share with the audience, you know, I'm not always calm. I get very upset sometimes, right? So there are many ways. You go to a touch, you go to a circle of trusted friends. For me, I go to my husband. I'll scream and yell and everything. Come back calm. Or I go shopping online or real life. Never mind stress out so you know you you must be careful about the reaction of events that comes to you and how you then propagate that do you want to pass negative vibe or you want to make i'm going to stop the negative vibe and make that difference oh that's that's a great sharing so like what Pandorina say it's okay for you to embrace certain tough times so find a way to distress yourself find a way to you know uh, complete push your negative vibes and try to embrace some positive vibes. So because it's important, because that's how you actually respond to certain conditions, not react. Because reacting is something that's going to make things worse. So good sharing, Panolida. I think we, we, I can keep asking, keep hearing things from you. Right. right. So uh, what are the criteria that you're looking into hiring talents? Let's say today you have received two resumes. Similar experience, similar skill sets. What will influence your decision in hiring? Is it will be based on professional certifications or higher education background or maybe a reference check? If they're equally capable to deliver the job, I look at the person's energy and how they will do the, the job. You know, in, in, in a professional setting, they always have this thing called scorecard, right? KPI. Uh -huh. So you can both score 100%, but one person may do it better with either uh, doing more collaborative or with more, uh, um, you know, with more dignity, with more conscience. So, you know, for me, you will, so at the interview stage, you will pick up from the person's energy and curiosity because when you ask and when you go for an interview always ask a question you know we all you know interviewers will always ask would you like to ask me something never be intimidated by the interviewer whether it's the ceo whether it's the necxo they're just as human as you and what we are generally looking for is somebody with an inquisitive mind uh, confidence and you know what some people say, but my English is not good as yours. I'm a Malay, I will tell you, my Malay is not good at all. So I'm sure everybody in the audience speak better Malay, you know, just because I did not have, you know, 20 years of not practicing, you know, I'm like, I will know I'm from Penang. I can speak Penang Malay, uh, you know? So, you know, it's like, don't feel intimidated. Uh, and if you feel that you want to come across, practice articulation. You know, I'm not asking people to read for the sake of reading, but you know, the choice of words uh, you, you use yeah. uh, shows whether you are well read. And I don't mean everybody goes to go digital now, but you must have some general knowledge, uh, something that's more topical than just your field. Because the other thing that we look for these days and we really, really look uh, and, and rate this is your collaboration. 
So if you notice, a lot of organizations make you do projects as a team, uh, even for fresh graduates. And then you can see whether there's too dominant who will never bring anybody else. Okay, if I have a sole contributor, it's okay. But if I want a team, you really look for people who display collaborative skills and uh, really inqu inquisitive. So I think it's equal for equal. It's how mm -hmm. that person has come across in, in articulating the, the energy. I mean, I won't lie to you, Pella. There are some people who just come interview and I'm like saying, come on, ask me something. Uh, smile or if you don't want to smile, show me energy. You know what I mean? And if you're, and if you're tired, just reschedule the, the meeting because <laughs> I want to give everybody equal chance, right? But uh, sometimes yeah. when you're doing a panel, we're like saying, oh my God, that person like menganto, you know? Kesian, uh, you know? Uh, and it's really about how you speak, whether your English is good or, or bad, you know? Oh, that's, that's awesome. Man, I, I like the questions that, that you said that, you know, during the interview, use your chance, right? Use your chance whenever. Because like what she said, but poor said that everybody is a human there, right? So everybody is holding a role, just a role, right? In an organization. So use a chance to, to articulate, you know, to use a chance to, to create a conversation, you know? And a part of it, like what Panulia said, that you also need to have some general knowledge. That's what she was saying, that you also, you know, in your, in your profile of the link, say LinkedIn, who are you following? What kind of a story do they follow me? How you get yourself to update yourself? So this is some of the important tips that actually on and off coming out from Puan Nolida. So use this, right? I got one more yes, question. Can yeah, I ask? yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I like a profile that shows the human being. If you put your cat, I know your cat is very cute, but I cannot see your professional image. And I'm not talking about how pretty, how good looking or not, you know? But I'm like, how am I going to rate a cat or something, you know? So it's yeah, very yeah. challenging for me. It's okay if it's on an IG, but it's professional, you know. And it's not as if you need to wear a suit and tie because sometimes you say, oh my God, this person is so stuffy. So, you know, what, uh, because it's, what's the physical image you want to project as well is important. Uh, uh, because you're talking about career branding, right? And you know, the yeah. human, humans make up their mind within two seconds of a visual interaction. So... When I look, I'm like, okay, you know, um, th that's my tip. And I'm really, it's not about looking pretty or handsome, but just looking that I want to engage and this is how I look. Uh, so yeah. don't put your cat, put your cat somewhere else. <laughs> right. Of course, that, that part of that, uh, I think it's also important to reflect your self-confidence on yourself. Uh, that's where when you're projecting a picture, it's, it's showing that how much confident are you on yourself? Absolutely. So that is what Ponolia say that, you know, that it is, it's, you already have an opportunity, you already have a great opportunity to, you know, to go in for interview. You have all the tools, all the things. But remember back again, career brand can make a difference, can make a lot of difference, right? So then, uh, one of the most important thing to cultivate your ideal career brand is to network regularly and effectively or to grow your professional uh, circle. Can you share tips with us on how to connect with peers and industry thought leaders in networking events? So if you were in, uh, in we, we, if we could meet personally, have the confidence and go and say, hi, I'm Eric. Uh, I, I, I'd like to, to, to have a conversation with you or you, you just, uh, sometimes it's after a talk, right? You said this, uh, can I understand something, you know, just, just go up and have the confidence. Now, if you go on, even on a social media platform, uh, I have a lot of approaches. As long as they're not trying to sell me something, they say that, you know, I, I, I value, I val uh, the latest I had is I, I value creativity. Can I hear your thoughts about it? You know, and sometimes it's just a, a paragraph or three lines and we have an interaction. So I see a lot more of, of young people having that confidence, just connect. The other one is to network is um, rely on your friends because you may know 10 people, your friends will know maybe a different 10 people. Why don't you just connect and say, hey, you know this person, can you introduce? And I've had a lot of that happening and I'm like saying, okay, sometimes you can help, sometimes you can't because there's not interest. 
And I, I'd like to think that there is enough leaders today who understand this engagement. And if they can't help you, they will always refer you and your circle gets bigger uh, and bigger. So I think you just have to make the first move um, to the audience. When I was young, I was absolutely so shy. Never would I thought that I would be able to do public speaking today. You just push and push and then you build your confidence, build that network, uh, build, talk to your friends, enlarge his or her contact and do yours as well. And you know, it's mutually, uh, mutually uh, beneficial. Right, awesome. And I, I just have this last questions that I'm going to ask because we've already exceeded the time, but I have this one question to ask because Axieta coming up with so many initiative um, and it's a bit great experience hearing it. So I have this last question is that what do you think about the unconscious bias that's happening silently in the organization? While in Axieta, they've introduced flex at Axieta to eliminate the work experience for the woman's employee. Do you think this will help to minimize gender bias? You know, the unconscious bias is a reality. We have to work at it. And the uncon unconscious bias against gender is not just from men against women. Sometimes it's women against women. So we have Flex at Aziata. So what we wanted to do is Flex at Aziata benefits all of our staff, right? But when you look at it from the gender of, uh, from the lens of a gender, so maybe it'll give the, uh, the mother or the carer, not even just the mother, ability to say, okay, I need to take my mom to the hospital every Wednesday, one to two. So we are saying, okay, you don't have to have your lunch at one to two. You can have lunch any, any time, but you just give the organization the eight hours a day. You can have two breaks or one break. So I do think, and you know, when you talk about unconscious bias, it's part of a bigger diversity and equity and inclusion program. So you, you give a little bit of what is the unconscious bias. Unconscious bias also comes from, not just from actions, but it also comes from words. I sometimes give my, uh, the team working for me, this is good morning guys. And I said, how come we don't say good morning girls, right? So then I said, can we just say good morning, everybody? You know, so even my daughter said, mom, it's so difficult. We're so used to saying good morning, guys, to be a generic word. And she's a millennial. I said, you want to pro propagate this non-inclusive language? You know, uh, uh, Carla, I must tell you this, in, uh, in, in a recent previous organization I was, they, they actually give us a training on inclusive language. And this has been right. done from the CEO all the way down so that you always respect the, 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 the what is deemed as the minority group, right? So that's why generally there is like the, the women in the workplace. So I think uh, things like Flex at Aziata are one of the real practices that will bring that kind of inclusion and that kind of inclusion will slowly remove unconscious bias. It's not as if it's not there anymore today. Just because you uh, introduce something, it means that it's already effective. Uh, it will have, it will make its uh, full impact. And that's another thing, Kalai, I think when we're also building a personal brand, don't feel that you have to be perfect and then you add it in your brand language. The fact that you already have the commitment, the conviction and the passion for it makes it real for you and therefore authentic. And therefore right. it's not just what is written, uh, not what in the social media and how you interact because the totality of your personal brand comes on written, comes from social media, comes from engagement, comes from visual representation, uh, and it's how you relate to yourself, your, your family and the community. That to me is your personal and your career brand. Right, awesome, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, I love to ask more questions because you are pouring out such a wonderful insight. That's when many, many tips are coming in. In fact, I think you can even write the tips, you know, like your blog tips about, about career brand. Because you have shared a lot, but however, we have to reach uh, to the end of the event. So, ma'am, before we end the session, ma'am, could you mind to share any anything to the community members directly so that they can hear from you? So, what I, I'd like to share is, um, you know, I think this is um, a time when a lot of people have the opportunities to really showcase your talents. So, just reflect. I said, be confident. Reflect on the 10 greatest things of your life. You know what? We have 10 that's not so great, but forget about it. That's for another day. 
and then build upon that. And that's your talent brand. That's going to define your success. So be confident, uh, reach for the stars, and I wish you all the success and fulfillment. And please, please do keep safe during these very challenging times. Good night. Thank you so much, for Nolida Azmi. You have been showering us with so much of insights and it's very useful for our community members. And it was a great pleasure to have you at Talent Talk Show. Thank you. Right, ma'am? Thank you again.